regarding license fees. The Christian Council weighing in on the marijuana debate and a serious traffic mishap in the Queens Highway area. The Bahamas Tonight Northern Edition starts now. This is the Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening all. I'm Megan Shepard. Thank you so much for tuning in. Topping news tonight, some members of the business community are reacting tonight to the Prime Minister's call for the Port Authority to consider giving first-time businesses and a break from business license fees. The Prime Minister making the comments during the official opening of Pirates Cove on Taino Beach this past weekend. The Prime Minister noting that the government will be exempting all first-time business owners and all businesses with a gross of less than $100,000 from business license fees. And he challenged the Grand Bahama Port Authority to do the same for business owners in the Freeport area. Sabrina Brown has the details. Small business owners who are licensees of the Grand Bahama Port Authority say their businesses continue to struggle and that's why they are endorsing the Prime Minister's appeal to the port to waive license fees for companies grossing under $100,000 annually. Most of the businesses right downtown right now, if you look about it, they are just closing down day by day and month by month. They're just closing and they're shutting out and having the license fees reduce will be a great help right now. Having these fees already already waived for those uh, licensees in the government um, areas, the out-of-port areas, um, I think that was a very good thing for the government to do, to assist. But we, the ones who are in the port area proper, we need assistance as well. I invite persons, small business owners, Let's go to the Port Authority. Let's talk to them. Let's tell them our challenges because the government has opened this conversation and I think it's beneficial to all of us here in Grand Bahama because we're not leaving. Right now Grand Bahama could use any and every help necessary to continue to keep doors uh, open for businesses and to keep employees working and so I welcome the move. Clifford Bow, like many others, has been operating in the downtown area for over two decades and he's making a special appeal to executives at the Grand Bahama Port Authority. I hear the cries of the small business owners downtown all the time and it's really really rough out there and any help that we can get we're appealing to the Port Authority Mr. Ian Roll, Ms. Saracen George, all of the persons you know the persons who can by the stroke of a pen make a difference we're asking you to do so because we've been with you from day one and we're going to stick with you but we need your help. You, Tony Pennerman has also been doing business in the heart of downtown for more than 20 years and he believes the prayers of the faithful is keeping their doors open. There's a group every Tuesday night um, comes downtown and, and they have a prayer meeting every Tuesday by around 8 o'clock. Um, I've seen them so many times and those are one of the groups I think is keeping Grand Bahama stabilized because of the prayer that they've been sending up actually for downtown. Sabrina Brown, ZNS Network News. Now we caught up with the president of the Grand Bahama Port Authority, Ian Roll, and we asked him the port's position on the matter. Italia Hall has the story. President of the Grand Bahama Port Authority, Ian Roll, was just a short distance away when the nation's leader made the appeal for the Grand Bahama business community. Having heard the appeal firsthand, Roll says the Grand Bahama Port Authority will look into it. We really have to see the impact of it but we are committed to actually look at it. But Roll says the license fees collected by business owners is put to good use as it helps to take care of the city. And having a business license with the Port Authority, he adds, offers a lot of benefits. Port Authority, we don't charge VAT. We don't collect VAT. Unlike a government that has different forms of taxation to maintain the infrastructure in the city, we have one, one line item called license fees. So uh, we have to consider the impact of it. And also, I think our licensees also appreciate the fact that um, uh, we, we, we are not comparing apples to apples either. Whereas the license fee from the Board Authority grants you certain concessions once you have a bond, such as um, uh, bonded fuel, for instance. Uh, what does that equate to over a year period? I mean, that could be significant as well. Um, if you decide that you want to buy a residence 
uh, during the period that you're in business. Um, you don't have to pay duty on, on your home. And out of the some 3,000 licensees, he says 70% are small business owners that he believes carries the economy. We need to absolutely ensure that they remain in business. And we are currently working with them. So those who have issues paying their license fees, we don't automatically terminate your license. The idea is to keep behaviors in business. And so I encourage those who are struggling to come in and talk with Nicole Colebrook um, and the customer service team uh, so we can work out some arrangement uh, to ensure that you stay in business. It's Halia Hall, ZNS Network News. Meantime, the debate continues on the possible decriminalization of marijuana in the Bahamas. Tonight, the newly elected president of the Grand Bahama Christian Council is weighing in. of the Grand Bahama Christian Council, Reverend Dr. Robert Lockhart says that while he was pleased to hear that the government is not presently considering legalizing marijuana in the country, he knows that the debates will continue. He says while some may claim that the drug is not harmful, based on his experience, he disagrees. From my experience in dealing with persons that have used marijuana regularly, it affects different people differently. And um, but in my experience in the Bahamas, um, um, most persons who I've dealt with that have been using marijuana, it has not had a positive effect on them. And so I think the widespread decriminalization of marijuana would not be healthy for the Bahamas, would not be good for the Bahamas. Because I think when we look at the history of the use of marijuana in the Bahamas, it has done more harm than good. Those in support of legalizing marijuana often cite that other countries are currently making it legal. Lockhart says that it is not wise to make decisions in this country based on the decision of others. We're a different country. We're an archipelago. We're a smaller country. And, um, and things impact us in ways sometimes doesn't impact other nations. And sometimes the mechanisms that other nations have in place to deal with things we don't have. And so all of these things we have to take in consideration. Lockhart says that he is, however, concerned about the young men who are currently in jail or have been in jail because of smoking a joint and now their records are ruined. So I think we do need to look at how can we assist young men who get involved in a lifestyle of using marijuana, how can we assist and help them without destroying their lives forever? And so maybe we need to look on how we go about dealing with the legal use of marijuana and, um, and helping persons that are using marijuana. But I don't think the answer is the legalizing of it widespread. Now, when it comes to marijuana for medicinal purposes, he says more research must be done to ensure that it will not be abused. But overall, the verdict is still out. Presently, we use drugs as medicines. I wouldn't go to the pharmacy and get medication and then just sit on my up and pump pills. That would be destructive. But that same medicine is used for a period of time to deal with an illness. And so definitely I think when it looks at medical marijuana is of course how, how would that apply? What would that look like? And, um, and so I think the verdict is still out on that. I think we need to do research as to um, is that a need we have in the Bahamas? In other news, two persons sent to hospital this morning following a three-car collision in the business district of Queens Highway. Tonight, one of the drivers involved is giving his account of what took place. Sabrina Brown has those details. The three-car collision on Queens Highway involving a black Chevy truck, a black Cobalt and a Champagne Audi brought traffic to a crawl during the morning rush hour. Driver of the 2003 Chevy Silverado, Javon Munning says he was heading west when the incident occurred. We was driving, going up this way. This Audi was behind us. The black car was heading, going down Queens Highway. 
they was both trying to overtake so this one tried to turn back in that's when he hit us in the back and then the black car ran into him they spin around this car the already spin around 360 and ran into the pole straight head on bounce and then spin back and face the opposite direction Munnings, who was not hurt, says he rushed to assist the occupants of the Audi. I rushed to the car, opened up the door. The lady, his wife, from what I understand, she was actually almost crushed because her legs were in there. You couldn't see nothing from her waist up. There was, it was under the mash between the dash and the seat and the floor. The baby was in the back seat, appeared to be okay. So I opened up the back seat, took the baby out, rest the baby on the floor, ran around to his door, opened up the door. He seems to be all right, but he was saying that his leg or something may have been broken. The female driver of the black cobalt and her young son appeared to be okay, but shaken up. I didn't make it to hers yet because we was helping, so but she was screaming and carrying on, but her baby was all right. She was just concerned about the baby. Sabrina Brown, ZNS Network News. Stay with us, The Bahamas Tonight, The Northern Edition continues in just a moment.